Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is exercise 12, the preparatory ground instruction for exercise 12. We're going to be discussing stalls on the aircraft. Uh, in this lesson, you're going to be learning how to enter and recover from and especially prevent an inadvertent stall. This is an important lesson uh, for you to know because uh, stalling an aircraft when unexpected has li led to a lot of crashes. It's a good way of uh, unfortunately killing yourself. Uh, best case scenario, making a bad landing. Uh, so it is important that you do recognize when an aircraft's about to stall. So let's begin with some theory. We covered this uh, a bit in our ground school. You remember our angle of attack, the angle of the wing that the wing cord makes with the relative airflow uh, has a critical angle. Above that critical angle, the coefficient of lift decreases and drag increases. So here's an important concept. The airplane can stall at any airspeed, any altitude, or any attitude as long as the critical angle is exceeded. So when you're practicing stalls, most of the ones that you practice will be nose high attitudes. But you can also stall an aircraft in a nose low attitude, even though it's it's less likely. During a stall, what ends up happening is there is a separation in the boundary layer. Uh, we can go into all sorts of theory behind this actually the air starts actually moving forward on the wing uh, in the boundary layer but it's probably a bit beyond the uh the scope of this course but what you do need to know that there's a in a decrease in lift and a drastic increase in drag at stall and the air becomes turbulent over the wing let's talk about some indications of a stall Generally, you are going to be nose high, but like I explained, it, it's not necessarily that you're nose high, but generally you will be. You're going to have a low airspeed, again, generally. Your uh, ailerons will be ineffective, and probably the most obvious one is a stall warning will be sounded. You'll hear that in a video that we watch, uh, and, and actually you probably know from, from your uh, slow flight video anyway, uh, this kind of annoying sound, and that will give you an indication that you are about to stall. There are a number of factors that will affect the stall. The first off is weight. At a higher weight, you're going to have a higher stall speed. I hope this is obvious to you why this would be, but the reason being at a higher weight uh, to maintain level flight, you need to have a higher angle of attack already to maintain sufficient lift to support the aircraft. And so you have a, a lower margin between the angle of attack that you're flying at a given airspeed and the critical angle. Secondly, uh, center of gravity location affects the stall. And we covered this already in your ground school. With an aft center of gravity, you're going to have a lower stall speed, but a more difficult recovery. The reason for this is because you're, with an aft center of gravity, you're going to have less downward force on the horizontal stabilizer. And because you have less downward force, uh, you require less angle of attack for the same amount of weight. Conversely, with a forward center of gravity, you're going to have a higher stall speed, but an easier recovery. So that's a question you, you should be able to uh, not only memorize, but explain it. And uh, it, because it may come up, I think it's something that the flight test examiners may ask you when you do your exam. So uh, if, if it's if it's still if you're still a bit confused by it, just review that lesson in the ground school, or you can just discuss it with your flight instructor, and, and they'll be able to explain to you. And once you understand it, it, it'll make total sense to you. Let's discuss the procedure for entry and recovery in a stall. So when we're practicing a stall, we're going to begin with the hazel check. Remember height, area, security, engine, and lookout. Just have a good lookout uh, around you. You're going to set the power and flaps as directed by your instructor, or if you're flying solo, how you would like to do it. You're going to raise the nose to maintain altitude. We don't want to climb, unless of course it's, let's say a full power stall, then, then climbing is inevitable. You, this is really important. You want to control yaw. Use your rudder only, never your ailerons. Only your rudder to keep that airplane straight and the wings level. Now, in some aircraft, uh, at about 55 knots, you may have to jerk on the control column to actually get a more defined stall. The reason for that is because training aircraft are designed to not stall aggressively because they're supposed to be easy to fly for student pilots. And so you may have to be more aggressive in order to stall the aircraft but your instructor will show that uh, to you how to properly do it uh, in your flight training recovery this should be automatic and drilled into your head when you stall the aircraft immediately lower the nose apply full power 
If a wing drops, you're going to level the wings using the rudder, so never the ailerons, and you're going to return to cruise and raise the flaps. Now, I just want to discuss this quickly with lowering the nose. When you lower the nose, you don't have to jerk the controls forward and push forward. What you just have to do is release the back pressure and lower the nose to a gentle nose down attitude. That's all you have to do. It's not, it's not super aggressive. It has to be immediate, but it, it is not so that you're pulling negative G or pushing negative G and everything in the back goes flying to the ceiling. It does not need to be nearly that aggressive. So let's watch a video now of a stall. And you're going to see a couple stalls. You're going to see power off stalls, which are relatively benign. And then you're going to see full power, full flap stalls, kind of something that simulates you going around with full power and climbing out uh, way too aggressively, forgetting to raise the flaps up. And you'll see that's far more aggressive. And you'll see the, the nose drop and probably a wing drop as well, uh, which has to be picked up. And you'll notice uh, the pilot picks that wing up using the rudder and never the ailerons. To stall the aircraft with power off, first do a hazel check to ensure uh, that the area around you is clear and there's no conflicting traffic. To enter the stall, close the throttle and maintain straight and level flight by progressively pulling back on the control yoke. Once the aircraft stalls, lower the nose to a gentle nose down attitude, add full power. If the wing drops, use only the rudder, keep the ailerons neutral, and then return to cruise. Usually power on stalls are done with some power on. Set the power that you wish to stall at, typically 1700 RPM. Maintain straight level flight and be patient. Control yaw. On the stall, you can lower the nose to a nose down attitude, add full power. In this example, you'll notice that the wing drops because of the torque of the engine. Do not use your ailerons, use the rudder only to pick up the wing and return to cruise flight. Here is an example of a climbing turning stall. In this stall, you will be climbing and turning at the same time. On stall, you can expect the outside wing to drop. On recovery, lower the nose to a gentle nose down attitude, add full power, and use opposite rudder, not aileron, to pick up the wing and return to cruise. This is an example of a descending turning stall. You're going to turn the aircraft and progressively pull back while descending. On stall, you will notice it is the inside wing that drops. Lower the nose, add full power, and use the rudder to pick up the wing and return to cruise. This is an example of an arrival stall. When the power is too low and the aircraft begins to descend below the glide path and the pilot continues to pull back on the controls and stalls the aircraft. To recover, lower the nose, add full power, and return to a go around or the approach. This is an example of a departure stall, possibly the most common type of stall. Pilot attempts to take off and wants to show off by pulling rapidly nose up. Unfortunately, they're not flying a fighter jet, they're flying an underpowered training aircraft. Pretty soon they run out of energy, run out of airspeed, and the aircraft stalls at a low altitude. To recover, lower the nose to a nose down attitude, add full power, and use the rudder to pick up the wing.
So for your recreational flight test, recreational pilot flight test, and your private pilot flight test, you will have to demonstrate two stalls, a power off stall and a power on stall. So you're going to be expected to do a hazel check and establish the configuration as uh, directed by the flight test examiner. You will have to establish a pitch attitude that will induce a stall. So this will be pretty obvious to you once you've done uh, some practice with your instructor. And then you have to announce to the examiner that uh, that there's a stall. So you just say stall. So the examiner knows that you can identify the warning signs of a stall. So let's say wing buffet, the nose drops. And then you have to maintain directional control. Remember, only with the rudders, never the ailerons. And you're going to smoothly recover. So just lower the nose to a gentle nose down attitude, full power. And then, of course, if you have to raise flaps if you have to and return to cruise. Let's review. A uh, stall occurs when the angle of attack exceeds the critical angle. An airplane can stall at any airspeed, altitude, or attitude as long as the critical angle is exceeded. On entry to a stall, you're going to do a hazel check. You're going to set the power and flaps as directed. You're going to raise the nose to maintain altitude. Uh, you don't want to climb unless uh, it's kind of a full power stall. Uh, and then you're going to control yaw with the rudder only, not the ailerons. And recover, lower the nose to a gentle nose down attitude, apply full power, keep the wings level with the rudder and return to cruise and raise the flaps as appropriate. That concludes this lesson on stalls. Our next lesson is going to be spins. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you in the next lesson.